So the men and women at home need to know what's happening. A lawyer at the FBI creates fraudulent evidence, alters an email. That is in turn used as the basis for a sworn statement to the court that the court relies on. Am I stating that accurately? Uh, that's correct. That is what occurred. Now, you have worked in, in law enforcement a long time. Is the pattern of a Department of Justice employee altering evidence and submitting fraudulent evidence that ultimately gets submitted to a court, is that commonplace? Is that typical? Um, I have not seen uh, an alteration of an email end up uh, impacting a court document like this. In any, in any ordinary circumstance, if a private citizen did this, fabricated evidence. And by the way, what he inserted was not just slightly wrong, it was 180 degrees opposite what the evidence said. So the intelligence agency said this guy is a source, and he inserted this guy is not a source. If a private citizen did that in any law enforcement investigation, if they fabricated evidence and reversed what it said, in your experience, would that private citizen be prosecuted for fabricating evidence, be prosecuted for obstruction of justice, be prosecuted for perjury? Um, they certainly would be considered for that if there was an intentional effort to deceive the court. On this, I'm going to um, defer because, as we noted here in, in the sentence you indicated, we referred that over to the Attorney General and the FBI Director for handling. Third major omission that the Department of Justice and the FBI did not tell the court is that this entire operation was funded by the DNC, was funded by the Hillary Clinton campaign and by Democrats. It was an oppo research dump. Look, at some level, this is the most effective oppo research dump in history because the Department of Justice and FBI were perfectly happy to be hatchet men for this oppo research dump. Now, throughout every one of the filings, DOJ and the FBI didn't inform the FISA court that this was being paid for by the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign. Is that right? That's not in any of the FISA applications. So they didn't tell the court that. And it's not like DOJ didn't know. Indeed, one of the senior Department of Justice officials, Bruce Orr, his wife worked at Fusion GPS, the oppo research company being paid by the, by, by the DNC. And he became the principal liaison with Steele without telling anyone at the Department of Justice that he was essentially working on behalf of the Clinton campaign. Who at the Department of Justice was, and by the way, several, several Democrats, it's interesting seeing Democratic senators wanting to defend this abuse of power. Uh, several senators, Senator Feinstein said, I wrote this down, the FBI didn't place spies in the Trump campaign. Uh, Senator Leahy said something similar. Well, that may be true, not spies in the Trump campaign, but reading from your report, in particular page four of the executive summary, your report says there, thereafter the Crossfire Hurricane team used the intrusive techniques, including confidential human sources, to interact and consensually record multiple conversations with Page and Papadopoulos, both before and after they were working for the Trump campaign, as well as on one occasion with a high-level Trump campaign official who was not the subject of the investigation. So they didn't place spies in the campaign, but they sent spies to record senior members of the campaign in the middle of a presidential campaign when, when that candidate was the nominee for the other major party that was the opposing party to the one in power. Is that right? Uh, they send confidential human sources in to do those. Did anyone at DOJ, who at DOJ knew about this? Did the Attorney General know about this? Did the White House know about this? Um, based on what we found, nobody had been told in advance. But once nobody it was happening, did it. they know? They did not. The only evidence that somebody knew were the line attorneys in NSD, in the National Security Division, when they were told very selective portions of what had occurred. Nobody knew beforehand. Nobody had been briefed. And frankly, that was one of the most concerning things here is that nobody would, would needed to be told. And I can tell you from my time at the Department of Justice and from my time in law enforcement, any responsible leader, when hearing that you're talking about sending in spies and sending in a wiretap on any presidential nominee 